What's going on guys, this is the Red Rogue, and today we'll talk about being prepared, and what happens when you are not. Other than being imprisoned for like 10,000 years or something, I don't know. More specifically, we'll be talking about being prepared for the leveling process that we'll all be going through once that big death hole in the sky opens up for the launch of Shadowlands. For a lot of people, leveling through a new expansion is one of those things that gets the dopamine running through our brain holes, since everything is new and exciting. And it will definitely be a completely perfect and lag slash bug free experience. Yup, nothing could possibly ruin it. Right? While I do enjoy having a story open up in front of me while leveling, especially with Shadowlands as they've done a very good job with it, there are times where you just want to hit max level pretty quickly and start working on the end game content. I usually am guilty of this on at least my first couple characters that I get to max level, since I want their professions leveled up and to start gearing out for raiding in Mythic Plus. Due to this, I have a sort of checklist of things I do slash keep up on when a big launch day finally hits. And some of these are pretty specific for Shadowlands, while others are a little bit more just general rules of thumb, or just things that are good to have or do. I'll try to go over as much as I can, though this will end up being a multi-part series, as this first topic is a pretty in-depth one. Oh, and if you end up liking this video, I would sincerely appreciate any comments, likes, or subscribes that you want to leave if you haven't already done all three of those in the time that I mentioned this, you super charming and thoughtful person. Anyways, shameless plug over, onto the video. So, we'll start with possibly the most important thing to know about with Shadowlands, the character level, item level, and gear level scaling. Obviously, the better geared a character is, the easier of a time they'll have leveling. However, with the character, item level, and stat squish coming with all of this, it's important to know what your gear or character will look like in a couple months when this all actually happens. As I'm sure most of you are already aware, the max level for Shadowlands is going to be level 60, so if you're 120 now, you'll be dropped down to level 50, as you will get your last 10 levels through the Shadowlands storyline. The item level of all gear is scaling with it, so I'll put up a chart of what your current item level piece will look like in the future. I find it reasonably likely that any of your characters should be at least like 430-ish item level at this point, as between assaults, world quest gear, horrific visions, azurite armor, the legendary cloak, and the heart of Azeroth, hitting around 430 item level should only take a few hours at most of playtime at max level. So, from this information, you'll know what item level you'll be, but what does that mean for leveling? Naturally, you'll receive gear while leveling, from quest rewards and whatnot, which, if balanced correctly, should result in a noticeable item level and power level increase to help reward you for doing the content. From the leveling I've done on the beta already, I've also found the item level of quest rewards and the character level that they're tied to. That chart should be up on the screen, like, right about now. Keep in mind, most quest rewards are of the uncommon, or green, item level quality. There are quests that will offer a superior or blue quality item as the reward, and those are usually at the end of a story chapter or campaign chunk. These are 8 item levels higher than the gear of that same character level if it's an uncommon quality. Though it's still possible they might adjust item levels differently when this goes live, I'm pretty confident that these are the numbers we'll be looking at going into Shadowlands. I've copied over my main, Zera, a couple times already, so I'll just show you an example. I basically equip right at exactly 130 item level, which is roughly 475 equipped in terms of patch 8.3 content. This means that I won't be seeing any consistent or real opportunities at loot upgrades until I'm level 59. If I were loaded up to the brim with a bunch of Nizoth slash Carapace Mythic gear, I'd be at 140-ish, meaning virtually nothing in the leveling process will be an upgrade. This means for a majority of the leveling process, I will have a pretty darn easy time clearing most of the content. However, there is something even more important than just raw item level. Sockets. Due to the massive stat squish that will incur, you want to have as many sockets as possible on your gear. While the stat value of gems is going down equivalently with the rest of the gear, for example, a deadly lava lazuli crit gem will still have 7 crit. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh wow, 7 crit. Truly, I can solo the Jailer now and save the Shadowlands. However, all classes can have at least 10 sockets on their gear, while dual wielding classes have up to 11. So, while leveling, this results in at least 70 extra secondary stats and gives even more value to your gear. 
While this will vary slightly from class to class, a socket on your gear is roughly worth the equivalent of 20 or so item levels, if not more depending on how heavily you depend on a certain stat. For most specs in the game, your primary stat is not worth nearly as much as your secondary stats, so this becomes a very effective way to stack up your best stat on any gear you have. Due to this, I recommend making sure you're holding on to any socketed gear you have that's of a reasonable item level, or putting sockets on your gear via the gouged Eye of Nazoth item that you can purchase for 25,000 mementos. Just uh, don't forget about that 100,000 memento bug mount if you're a mount collector. I still need to put a couple more sockets on some off pieces that I plan on wearing for launch, but I want to make sure I buy that mount too, so just as a reminder for you, just in case you forget about it and then you burn through all your mementos. That would kinda suck. Another important thing to hold on to, unless they decide to nerf these right before launch, is anything that offers a proc-based damage or on-use ability. Things like the Bile-Stained Krog Tusts from Underrot, the Salvaged Incendiary Tool from Mechagon, or Gedi Iku, the Cut of Death from King's Rest. Since corruption won't work anymore, any free sources of damage or stats are always welcome. Mechagon Junkyard and Workshop both have quite a few items that offer unique procs or effects, like the ever-popular Hyper Thread Wrist Wraps. There are quite a few other potent items to acquire, such as the Neural Synapse Enhancer, if you're a bursty caster and want a big int proc up while in a damage burst window or something along those lines. Speaking of Mechagon, another thing you should probably keep an eye on if you have any in your banks are the Mechagon If-Then Logic Loop Rings. Especially if you're a class that values crit, haste, and mastery pretty evenly, as the first half of the rings are heavy crit with haste, and the second half are heavy haste with mastery. These rings have a variety of effects, but the most useful one to a lot of people is the one where if you hit an enemy with multiple moves, or you hit them from behind, then you get a haste buff, or it does a little bit of damage. There are also ones that'll heal up to 5 people around you for a small amount of damage, or a magic absorb shield, so you might want to keep an eye on those too. However, don't go too crazy on farming any of these, as there is a possibility that Blizzard will nerf or hotfix numerous of these strong effect-based items, or have the effect have like a level cap or something. I'm sure they don't want fire mages running around Castle Nathria with the Hyper Thread wrist wraps from the prior expansion for too long, but if you have them lying around, it wouldn't be a bad idea to hold on to them just in case. Another thing to consider, and I touched up on this part a little bit ago, corruption will cease to exist, and Azerite essences and traits will only work outside of the Shadowlands. However, you should still get your legendary cloak up to at least rank 12 if possible. The reason being is that Ajra Kamas, the legendary cloak, might not be stopping any corruption from affecting you anymore since it doesn't exist anymore, but it still offers a pretty beefy stat proc to help you deal extra damage, and this effect unlocks once you upgrade it to rank 12. The legendary cloak will easily last you the entire leveling process, since the item level of it increased for every rank you had into it up to rank 15. The stat proc still works at level 60, which I'm not 100% sure if they'll actually let us keep using it once we reach max level, but even just for leveling, it is a pretty strong proc of over 350 of your primary stat, which in the new stat squish is a pretty large amount. I think that covers all of the need to know stuff regarding gear and the level slash stat squish. I hope this information will be useful to anyone planning in advance for the expansion launch. I have information and tips for at least one more video on this overarching topic, however the gearing and scaling part was long enough that I figured it'd be better off as its own separate video. I'll be putting anything and everything about this topic into a playlist on the channel though, so once it's all complete you'll have a few videos to look through, if you want to of course. If not, I have plenty of other things I cover on the channel too, so if you haven't seen any of it yet, maybe you totally should. If you've seen any of my other videos and like what you saw, I'd sincerely appreciate any likes, comments, or subscribes, as they truly do help the channel grow. And a huge thank you to all my subscribers for sticking around. Thank you all so much for watching, this is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.